going on everybody? What's going on ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Hans Nobi, episode number 34. Um, today, I want to talk to you guys about a few things, few changes that we're making. Also, I want to talk to you guys about my experience from just being sort of a beat maker to being a music producer, which is a transition that wants to happen around the beginning of 2016 or so. 2016? Yeah, 2016. No, I'm sorry. 2015. Anyway, I'm going to talk to you guys about the difference from making that transition, just emailing beats. So first thing I want to talk about is I'm changing the format of the vlog just a little bit. Um, I recently posted something on Facebook and my man Gio the Rican, uh, one of the best engineers I know of, coming straight out of the Bronx, pioneer over at iStandard doing a lot of great things over there. Uh, make sure you follow him on Instagram for his engineer etiquette. He's been killing it. Great, gives great advice, great value for you audio engineers. Because I really have no idea what to do as far as the mixing. But, one to say, uh, he brought something to my attention. He said that most people don't catch on to like your YouTube channel to like blog number 252, whatever, right? And so I thought about it. I was like, that would be a very long title if I put uh, Han Snowby Vlog number 286, new drum kit. You know, I think that's a pretty long title. So, what I want to do is that it's still going to be the vlog, this is still going to be Han Snowby Vlog, but we're changing it just a little bit. Instead of it just being Han Snowby Vlog number slash whatever, it's just going to be the whatever part. So. This is going to be the end of the Hans Nobi vlog numbering system uh, as far as in the title, but it'll just be the name of uh, the vlog itself. I feel like that's pretty good because, I mean, this is pretty much what I'm going to be using my YouTube channel for is documenting and letting you guys know what I have going on, trying to bring as much value to you guys as possible. Also, leave something in the comments if you make a suggestion or anything like that. I'm open to it. But anyway, going past all that, the main thing I want to talk to you guys about is being in a different roles of being a beat maker compared to being a music producer and what I've noticed uh, the difference between being a beat maker and a producer is that they both have the give and take so you know pros and cons plus and minuses of both parts so being a beat maker it's it's very transactional it can be uh, you know you, you know you build with an artist a little bit you send them some beats you don't give them any direction they go record to it goes in a mixtape, album, project, LP, EP, single, whatever. And that's pretty much it. You get the you get your production credit. And that's it. Done. Whether you decide to do it for free or you decide to charge for it, it's totally up to you. And uh, I did that for a little while. That was cool. I did what's called the PayPal house or what I call the PayPal house, and it was cool. You know, I, it was, it was, it was nothing wrong with it. But you can give a beat to an artist. You can sell a beat to an artist. And the record to it, and the song can just completely just be what I mean, just straight hot garbage. And you kind of got to live with it. So that's that part of it. Then there's another part called the production side, which is virtually you're helping build an artist's vision from A to Z, you know, from the bottom up. And, uh, you know, I always tell my artists, because I'm working with a few now, producing them. I said, you paint the picture, it's my job to frame it. So that's basically what I'm trying to get these artists to do, which is really opening up. It's been very eye-opening, really building with an artist and really getting inside their head and knowing what they like and what they don't like. And it's always weird because, and I'm pretty sure a lot of my producers, my YouTube producer community can definitely test to this. Artists seem to have a knack to pick the beats you would never think they would want to pick. I just had that, I'm actually um, co-executive producing uh, Kalena Celeste's new album, which will announce soon, just be patient. But uh, some of the, the, the tracks I was playing for her, she didn't really like, and I was like, that's kind of weird. Why would you, you know, why would you not like this? is kind of like, she has like a weird eclectic pop electronic flavor to it, and I was playing those and then I play like a regular beat uh, I had sampled uh, a ticking clock and I made a beat out of it and she was like that's the one I'm like the one with the 808s and she liked it 
So we're kind of working with it and everything else. It's sort of the same thing with Trick or Don. It's always like this thing where I'll give him something. I'm like, I know he's not gonna like this and he'll wind up liking it and it'll be fire. And so that's one of the things about being a producer is that you're constantly, constantly, constantly trying to find like these ways to like get inside the artist's head and really figure out what they like and what they don't like. And uh, it's, been, it's been very good, you know. Um, the bad part about it, things take a while. And I'm a patient guy, but sometimes I'm not that patient. And sometimes you can butt heads because uh, things happen in, in outside the inside the studio, outside the studio. So that, that's the whole dynamic. You get to really see each other's personalities, and you really have to go in with like this mindset that you can't have an ego, which is cool. But in the same sense, in the same word, it can get kind of you can get a bit flustered uh, because you want things your way, they want things their way. But once you guys meet in the middle, the track is flawless. Uh, and so, you know, this is, it's, it's part of the game. Sometimes I'm beat maker, sometimes I'm producer. It's just part of the game, but that's one of the cool things about it, um, I would say, is, you know, being a beat maker, it's cool. It's a nice hustle. I'm all for it. Being a producer, it's not really a hustle because things take a while. You still get paid, but things take a while. And you gotta keep track of everything. Everything. So yeah, that's that part. But yeah, no more numbering system, beat maker, producer, either way you wanna, you know, either direction you wanna go, I'm all for it. Leave a comment, let me know uh, which one do you prefer. Do you prefer being the beat maker side or do you prefer being the producer side? There's really no wrong answer. There's some beat makers that make more money than some producers. There's producers that make a lot more money than beat makers. So it all depends on what you wanna do. But leave a comment below, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow all these, whatever they are, they should be here on my um, uh, social media accounts. So let me know, let's connect, man. Holla at your boy, loose.